this other part of the tutorial we have seen a lot so far we've seen right from the basics of php to the level of associative arrays in php and we are going to continue building from there so that you actually get the best experience all right okay so in this tutorial we are going to talk about forms in php and uh, just to let you know that this is the core of php because most of what you'll be doing will be handling forms right the by the end of this lesson by the end of this tutorial we should be able to first distinguish between front end and back end because it is really very necessary uh, when we talk about forms some kind we see that most of the data is coming out coming from a certain front end somewhere and yeah you should be able to know the difference you should be able to explain the various shp request method right how do you submit forms in php and so on you should be able to use forms right to get the user data and you should be able to use php to handle this data that is being submitted right not wasting much time i think we should just dive in and get started firstly you should know that php integrates so much with html i can say this is one of the uh, the languages that integrate with html without uh, any barrier right php can be used in many ways it can be used to produce standalone applications and so on we said that before and you should know that php was designed as a back-end language right which we already know its primary purpose was for web applications so if its primary purpose was for web applications then definitely it was programmed to uh, handle html and so you should know that most of the times php will be used to handle some maybe templates are coming in and so on this brings us to you knowing that there is a front end and there is a back end right the front end most of the times is the presentable layer that you see the html rendering that you see when you open a given page the back end has to do with what happens in the background right i am not going to go into the detail of that because that is not what we are meant for they are i think the tutorials have been produced to actually distinguish between that but you should know something since we are working with forms you will often get data from a given front end and you as a back end developer you are going to actually handle this form but for you to handle the form you are going to uh, you are supposed to know what is happening in the front you are supposed to know uh, maybe the request type that is being sent and so on this brings us to request super globals in php now since php was built with web development as a primary case it has the functionality to ease processing of html request when a front-end client makes a request to a back-end server several super global related to the request are available to php script what are these super globals super globals are automatic global variables which are available in all scope throughout a script now if we have our maybe front end like we said php is built to handle a lot of front end so request coming from the front end comes with a given method and php has inbuilt super globals to handle this remember we talked about global variables before and constants right super globals are methods that are built to handle most of this request and most of the time they are they store their values using associated arrays right again we did associated arrays in the previous lesson so if you still have some problem with associated arrays you should go back there get it and then come and continue now a list of some of the super globals that you have in php uh you have them here there are just so many right you have the global, you have the server, you have the get, the post, the file, the cookie, the session, the request, and like you see. But in this our tutorial, we are going to dwell more on these three, the get, the post, 
and the request. Most of the time in your PHP or handling, form handling, you are going to be handling this example, right? So these methods are used in HTML. We are going to get into that. The get contains an associative array. Note, these super globals that you are having here, like I said, they are associative arrays. Means that they are actually going to store the data that you have and they are going to use these globals to actually process them. All right. So we will dive into the get method so that you actually see. In HTML, setting a form method to its attribute get is like specifying that you would like the form to be submitted using the get method. Again, now let me come to uh, explain what this get method is all about. When you are submitting a form, right, sometimes you might be submitting the form just as the name state get. You're submitting the form to maybe get some user data from a certain storage somewhere. Most of the time you are going to use get, right? And another thing we get is this. When you use the get method, the uh, the request uh, that you are sending is visible on your URL. That is called a request URL or URL query string. So that when you fill the form and you submit, a certain long string is generated on your URL and it contains all the data that you inputted in your form. Now you will see where this should be used and where it should not be used, right? So uh, I think we should uh, go to our uh, our text editor and actually see how handy this can become. So I am in my text editor and uh, I have a folder here called forms, right? I'm going to create our form and that will be uh, maybe index.php. Index.php. I'm going to define basic html here and passing the title maybe as form get right and then note something by default when you are using a form even if you don't specify the form method it uh, carries the get method by default so if um i define a form here and i'm not going to pass this out now this form is going to get some user input. So I'm going to get a label for name. I'm going to name. I'm passing the input tag to get the name, right? I'm passing this. Name. Now, I just touched another thing. This name element that you have here, or this name attribute that you have here, it is very useful when you are dealing with forms, especially in PHP. Remember, I said those super globals they store associative arrays that have keys, right? Like we said, associative arrays are attributed to keys and values. So what happens is this: when I pass in this name, the key is going to be the name, right? We'll actually get to see that when we run this. I'm going to copy this and paste it out here and format this by breaking. I'm going to pass this email. I think the, the name will be email. And I am going to, uh, the type will be email. I'm going to pass in another button, submit, right? Type. I put the submit. I'm actually going to pass in submit, right? Okay. So we have this now. Actually, this does not do anything. So if we come to our browser, and let me refresh this and go to forms, right? We have this uh, this form that is being displayed here. The form takes in your name and your email but when i click on submit nothing happens because i haven't done anything i haven't handled anything but what i want you to take note of is what is displayed on this url here 
this is what I said the URL stream right you see name and uh, the email that is it about the get method now let us actually handle the PHP part of it by coming here and defining some PHP and <coughs> printing out the value of our request that we send. So it's going to be uh, the get. Let's say we set our form. Okay, let's try this out without specifying that the method was get here. So if I come back here, refresh, you see what is displayed here, right? That's what I meant by by default. You have the request which carries either the get or the post, but generally it is the get. If you come here, you see that we have an array that is displayed. Where is this coming from? What type of array is this? This is an associative array, key and value, right? Where is it coming from? It is coming from our get here, right? I remember telling you that the get was a super global and it stores the data that is being sent, right? You could actually get use this get to do a lot. So for example, if I want to uh, print out just the name, I can pass in the key. Like we did before in a, in a, the previous associative array. You see, this is the name, right? So I could actually do some formatting and say, uh, hello, and passing this. So I come here, refresh. You see, hello uh, from Andrew, right? You see how handy this becomes. That is it about the form get method. But most of the times you really want to explicitly pass it as get so that uh, you yourself, you, you understand it when you are going over your code, right? If I refresh, it's going to do the same thing. That is it about the get method. The next method is going to be the post method. Post is also a request method. For your HTML, right? And this method is used most of the times to send data to the database, right? Now, what happens as a difference between this post and the get is that the post doesn't show the data that is being passed on the URL, right? How do I mean? Let me go back here. This just a moment. I would like to comment this out. So we don't get an error. Uh, come back here and go to your forms, for example. If I actually fill this out and I submit, nothing happens because we haven't uh, done anything. But look at this URL here. We don't have any of that data that was there previously. Uh, where was it? Okay, you can't figure that out now, right? You don't have any of that data passed on as a URL string. And this is some sort of security because some sensitive information will not be shown here, right? Again, you use the get method most of the times when you want to get data from the database, right? You use the post method when you are sending data to the database. All right, let's just fully handle this method, this post. So instead of get here, I'm going to pass in the post method and this time I'm just passing it without getting a key. Now, if I refresh this, this was the previous data that was there. Let me actually explicitly uh, print out the data. Note what is here. When I submit, you see what changes, right? So our data is being submitted. That is it about the post and the get method in PHP. The next thing we are going to talk about is the form uh, action, right? Let me come to that, uh, our form action. Yes, by default, <coughs> we did not mention the action. The action ref refers to where we are submitting this data. 
the action could be a file that is going to handle the data that we are getting from the user. All right, so this brings me to telling you that the HTML uh, document or the, the form element also has the action which you can uh, specify in your form tag. So if I come here and I pass in the action, if I set it to empty string, it means that I want to set the action to this current page. And even if I don't set in the action, by default, we are submitting the form to the current page. Now, I want us to do something else. Let us set the form action to another page. That page is going to handle our PHP. Most of the times you have to, not most of the time, it is necessary that you actually differentiate your logic from your actual view, right? Yes, you will not want to come and write your PHP code in your front end. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to handle this action by passing in user data.php. This is actually a file that I'm going to create. So this is user data.php. What will this user data.php do? It is going to actually uh, have this. So I'm going to cut this fully so that all the logic is sent here right okay so i'm not going to pass in this hello from now all right we have this right. when we submit this form it is going to load this file and all the data that has been passed through the form is going to be accessible here all right, let's refresh this just to make sure that we are actually doing something. So if I put this, pass in the information, when I click on submit, you see what is loaded here, user data.php, and we have this printed out. That is what the form action does. It specifies the file that you handle our request, right? That is it. Now, most of the times you will not actually be printing out the, the the associative array that is passed in. Most of the times, you're actually going to get the keys and and print out the value or save their value somewhere, right? So you can actually define uh, a variable and store these values inside, right? And I actually uh, echo uh, main. Um, with the name. And break the line and email is equal to that, right? I just want to make this at least a little bit more presentable so that if we come back here and we refresh, we no longer get that ugly associative arrays. We actually get some formatted data, right? So, uh, coming back to our form, note this super global is an associative array. I keep on repeating this so that you actually get to let it get uh, stuck on your brain because it's actually very necessary. This request, this super global is an associative array that you can actually access it using keys. The keys are what is passed on your form with the name, right? So, if this, for example, was a user email then when i am passing in the data here i should pass in a user email right um, if i print this out we are expecting to have the same result okay sorry it's not defined yes because we are trying to submit the form okay let me pass in this data email let's just email at gmail.com and submit you actually see that our data is being passed here that is it about the form submit form post and form get the request to do the same thing I recommend that you actually get to do a lot of research on these forms and so on. Okay, enough of all of this. 
let us actually get to do something useful with our form right we are just getting the name and printing it out i want us to actually define something useful this might be like a cheat sheet right now i'm going to define a calculator form PHP and this form is actually going to get two user input pass the user input to a calculator class or sorry the calculator file that is going to process the sum and the difference right this is uh, like a cheat sheet to the assignment that was given last week right so that I just actually get to see the use of that I'm going to create another file called calc dot php and this is where our logic is going to be handled for now nothing yet so this calculator form to define some html in here and that's it we type to as calc and then i'm going to actually uh, define the form and the action will be calc dot php i'm sure you know what action is all about and my method here is going to be any will go because we are not actually doing something very sensitive but now since we've been doing a lot of posts i'm going to use get here and i'm going to get number one and number two and then i'm going to submit this is just a simple html uh, for this this is num one label for number two or passing the key as num two and then submit now let us actually load this form user data let me go to our calculator hp present us with this form look at what is here it is because we pass in the form type to be number right so when we uh, input some numbers here and we click on submit it's supposed to take us to the calc.php with that data all right so now we know that our data actually goes to this calc.php first thing let us print out this data right as an associative array so that is going to be the get right like we said this get is actually going to print out the full associative array with a key and a value so if i refresh this I see number one is 28, 123, and number two is 323, right? Okay, let us make use of this data, right? So instead of printing that, I'm going to define another variable called number one and assign it to get number one and number two to be get number two, right? So these values have actually been passed. So that if I print it out, I can print them out separately. But our goal is not just print them out. We want to produce a simple calculator. We want to print out the sum and the difference. You can do the rest, right? So I will echo this difference variable sum equal to uh, num one plus num two and difference equal to number one minus number two. Then I'm going to actually echo some and I'll concatenate it with the song. I'm, I'm going to break the difference. And concatenate it with a difference. And break the line right. Yes, we have done some logic here. So if we actually get to Let's come back and refill this form. Let me refresh it. Let me pass in 12 and pass in uh, 2. When I click on submit, see that we have sum equal 12, difference equal uh, 11, oh, sorry, difference equal 10, right? That is how handy forms can be. There's a lot that you can do to forms. When we do conditionals, I am going to come back to this and use the same thing to do some basic operations still on the calculator right that is it about forms you see now that forms are very useful you have the form action which has to do with which file that handles your form 
you have the form method which has to do with the kind of request you are making whether it's a get or a post and so on that is it that is how handy forms can become you can actually extend your calculator to calculating things like uh, the product let me define that product or to uh, yeah product this time right two we have another thing like the quotient which number one might divided by number two and we have uh, the modulus right modulus yeah you go ahead and do that i'm not going to do that out because uh, yeah, i just don't want to do it. so i bring that as product and product and refresh this page and we have this outline that is just the simple thing about forms in php so uh coming back to this i'm just going to give you a a brief overview of what we've been doing so far right so we actually uh yeah here we are why is this thing changing we just we just closed it well all right that's it about forms please that's just it about forms in php i think we are going to end here and uh, we'll be handling files next time we actually get to see how these files and the forms could link right that's it